um, you know, Johnny Carson and the other guy, what's his okay, name? Now everybody knows. There we go. Oops, back this up. You can ask me some questions. I have lots of things to talk about today. Well, there we go. Hi, this is John Licata, and this is Licata Live, and this is my colleague. Now I'm Jen. I uh, have some questions to ask John today about the market, so you, we can get. We got a lot of info. We've we been, did. you know, we had our our study group and. Uh, yeah. Talking about what's going on locally, what's going around around the country, and there's a lot of changes in the market, and I know a lot of our clients are kind of confused with all of the data that's out there and all of the headlines and and different things like that. So we thought today we would kind of put your minds at ease with some of this information we have for you. You know, before we get started, mm -hmm. I, you know, I I listen to Fox Business. Mm -hmm. I look listen to CN and business and they give a lot of great information about real estate they talk a lot about real estate mm -hmm. you know the the problem if it's a problem is that they're talking about the nation yeah and what's going on across across, across the nation and real estate is very localized it yeah. is it is it's very true in our market the greater dc area although you know, here in, when you think of Culpeper and Fredericksburg and Orange County, we're sort of at the extent extent of it. I, I'm maybe not Fredericksburg anymore because that place is rocking, but you know, we are at the fringe of it, but we, we are advantaged. I think so. That, that the people in uh, San Francisco or Toledo yeah. or Durango, Colorado aren't. Yeah, yeah. We uh we seen this graph today and uh, California was way up here with with was it home prices and affordability and everybody else was kind of mid range and, and California was almost off the charts so being over here in Virginia it's it's definitely more affordable than than some places yeah. so um so we were watching about um mortgage interest rates and about those stabilizing over the next year or so. And the projections from the experts look look pretty good. There's, um, and I think that stability is going to bring some buyers back into the market. So um, it's funny. I, I was with a group of uh, local business owners and politicians last week, and we were of a, a variety of different age groups, younger than me, older than me, older than me, and. Um, we remember when interest rates were 16%. First home I ever bought, my wife and I bought, was 12%. Mm -hmm. um, now for the last three years, it's been two and a half and three and a half percent. So, yeah. you know, it's a challenge when you get used to that pace. But yeah. um, five to 6% is normal mm -hmm. and actually good. Yeah, those are good rates. <clears throat> and I know um, I just heard uh, Got some data from which came from Freddie Mac, National uh, Fannie Mae, National mm -hmm. Association of Realtors, Mortgage Bankers Association, who said over the next 12 months, they say the average, the collective interest rates should be in 4.8 to 5.4 percent. So it's stabilizing. Yeah, yeah that's going to be a really good place to to be comfortable at going back into the market and and looking for a home. So and and, and that is a good rate. I mean yeah. that is. Historically, a you know very good rate yeah. and a balanced rate. You know, part of the problem part of is part of the problem is again when you're used to two and a half or three percent. Yeah, it's sort of like if I'm used to running two miles a day at a twelve minute mile pace, and all of a sudden I'm running six miles at a seven minute pace. It's not a whole lot a whole lot of fun. Right, but. Um, I think it's stabilizing. So even when you listen to the variety of folks who are chiming in right now, you have, oh my God, it's negative to, oh my goodness, it's not so bad. It's going right. to be positive. Right. We're trying to sort things out. Mm -hmm. And as things get sorted out, it will normalize. Right. And I know our in our business and our team and everyone that we listen to, I think... 
by the end of the first quarter of next year, it'll be sorted out. We'll get the election done and yeah. uh, things, the interest rates will stabilize. Yeah. So, so I'm on the optimistic side. Me too. Me too. I, I don't really know what it's like to be in a balanced market. So I'm looking forward to that and having a little well, bit. Well, you just bought a house I did. recently. I did. You know, you know if, if, if you're in one mindset, you should be concerned. I'm not though. I'm not. I think I think it's always a good idea to buy a house because homes are always going to appreciate, you know, and you're going to get that equity built up into it. So, and you can always mess with your your mortgage, uh, your interest rate uh, refinance to get a lower rate at you know at some point um, if you need to. So, I think it's always a, a wise investment moving forward. Well, Jen, you know, and I know you just bought a house and. So you're 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 of of that folks who say, oh, I buy a house and I buy it too high. You know, mm -hmm. the reality is, if you're going to be in that house for five to ten years, mm -hmm. and you know, um, unless you're really a risk taker, you don't turn over houses before then. But mm -hmm. if if you're in that house for five years, you're going to be okay. Yeah. In fact, mm -hmm. I'll bet you a dollar to a donut hole that you'll absolutely increase your value. Mm -hmm. Now, I just don't know whether much? it'll be the the 2 to 4% that the nationwide average has been for mm -hmm. about 50 years yeah. or is it going to be the you know the the 12% yeah. that is uh, I I think right now at the end of July the uh, average increase across the country is fifteen point eight percent. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't expect that, and and I, and I, and I think that's unrealistic. Right. To to perpetuate for it's, five years. Yeah, but that's not I, sustainable. I think at two to four percent, or the average over the forty some years, is like three point eight percent. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, I think so. And considering it's our forever home, I just have to work on paying it off. The good news is right now that. Um, it's still a strong seller's advantage market. It is. But buyers are getting a little more buying power. Negotiation. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, they definitely Excuse are. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, a few a little bit more nego yeah, they're, they're feeling a little better right Yeah, now. they feel like they have a little bit more power and control in what's happening with the home they're buying, which is nice for them. Um they were saying the experts we were listening to this morning that, you know, six months ago the list price was kind of like the floor of the negotiations and now the list price is kind of like the ceiling of the the negotiation price. i saw that too yeah i, saw that I thought too. that was a really good way to put yeah, it yeah that was interesting so mm -hmm. so six months ago you started here and that's the starting point yeah. you would go here right right now you're starting here at mm -hmm. the at the right point. At the right point, yeah. And, and buyers feel like they can, you know, maybe get some closing costs or, you know, just wiggle room in there for, for them. Yeah, I saw in the community that I live in that um, you know, just a small snapshot of about 4,000 homes that, you know, that have buyers and sellers over the course of a year, that the average uh, year over year increase was uh, just what I'm looking at here, 11.9%. Mm -hmm. um, days on market in July was 38 days. Yeah. 38 yeah. days. And uh, year to date, above, uh, above list price, year to date is uh, a little less than 1% above list price. But in July, it was actually pretty flat. Was, okay, so you know, we're just kind of they seeing. were selling at at list price, so okay, which is uh, still really good. Yeah, still yeah. really good. So yeah, um, I had a question here. Can you explain what a balanced market is? I think people might need to understand. That. <clears throat> so a balance, cu couple things that you look at a balanced market. So um, a balanced market is having enough inventory that turns over completely okay. within six months. Oh, okay. So if there are a million homes on the market across mm -hmm. the country today, a balanced market is it takes six months for those million homes to sell. 
from list to close from from the time it goes on the market to the time it sells okay okay and six months of inventory mm -hmm. six months of inventory is a balanced market okay so for a period of time this early this year just here in our area the inventory was like two and a half to three weeks i remember that now it's about two and a half months okay so it's still a very advantaged seller mm -hmm. so what that means there's just not the inventory to support the buyers now but there are less buyers now because interest rates have gone up but inventory really hasn't gone up that really gone up that much mm -hmm. in fact um i will say this i saw here's some data for you this is through the i think the first week of of this month mm -hmm. um over last year our inventory is 26 here this is in our market right. here 26 percent above the same time last year that's good but yes it is but compared to, to 20 2020 september it's still 5.4 percent below that compared to 219 it's over 42 percent below that Sheesh. so um like i just looked in our community this morning i think we have 33 Three, homes yeah. for sale mm -hmm. Which and is up from earlier in the year when we seen that. Well, we had eight or nine in, yeah. in, in my community. But the other factor that people look at is pending sales compared to inventory. Mm -hmm. So earlier in the year, there were, uh, in, in this region, about four times pending sales to what inventory was. It looked mm -hmm. like this. Pending sales, that means it's, under contract, but it hadn't settled yet. Mm -hmm. Currently, it's shifting. And it's, uh, I just looked again in, in our community, but our community is a, you know, a blueprint for the region. Right. Is, uh, I think we have, uh, like in the past, it'd be for 10 units of inventory, there were 45 sales pending. Okay. Uh, right now, I think as of today, there is, uh, 33 units available mm -hmm. in 18 or 19 pending. So it's shifted. It's certainly yeah. shifted. That's probably a best indicator because that tells you what's going on mm -hmm. in, in the region. And that's why, you know, when you listen to Fox Business, which I think does a great job talking about real estate, it's talking about the whole country mm -hmm. when the reality is I don't live in the whole country. Right. You know, I live in Locust Grove, or I live in Reston, mm -hmm. or I live in Oakton, or I live in Stafford, and and that's really what you got to look at. And mm -hmm. and the, the 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 negative, the optimists and the non-optimist people. I mean, the optimism where we live here, we are so advantaged because of the government, because of the military. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether you're left or right or in the middle, and they talk about less money in government and shrinking. Listen, both of them, both both of them have. They, yes. they, they may talk a game, but it, it doesn't doesn't work out that. So this is true. We're, may, maybe they'll they'll shut down something in in uh, in, in Utah, but it, it's not happening in Norfolk. It's not happening no. in. In Stafford, not it's yet. not happening, you know, around the Pentagon. No, not at all. Where the government building, so. Yeah, definitely. So we were talking about um, the affordability of housing, and I know that's a big one on people's minds as well. And so for buyers out there, you know, if you want to live in in Stafford, you know, maybe right in the center of Stafford, it might be too pricey for you. But if you can go just outside in like Stafford County area, you might be able to have, you know, more home for, for your buck there. So that's always kind of an option when you're talking to your realtor and, and trying to decide where you want to move to is you don't have to be right in the middle of Stafford. You can be on the outskirts. The same with Fredericksburg or Spotsylvania County. And if you can handle a little bit of a commute, you know, then, then your money will go further. 
Yeah, I mean, and, and I, and I, the first time home buyers, the young professionals, mm -hmm. the young, you know, families working, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, it's it's a challenge right now. Mm -hmm. But there are, there are three things mm -hmm. that I think help um, working through or, or or beating the affordability, right. making it. Right. And, and one is expanding your search area. Right. So especially yeah. with virtual workplaces where mm -hmm. you know you could you don't have to go in every day or you might need to need to commute i know when i when i moved to the washington area many years ago um i uh, and i bought my first house you know i couldn't afford arlington yeah you know, I, I i lived there for a while when, when i first came here and it was a lot of fun being close to dc and all but when i bought my first house I couldn't afford to live there, so yeah. I moved out a little bit and I commuted to work. Yeah. But expanding your search area, mm -hmm. and then the the other thing would be exploring, you know, the your your finance op options. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm someone who's comfortable with, um, you know, loans, uh, short term loans, uh, you know, uh, with flexible interest, and mm -hmm. you know, uh, I've never had a problem with that. I actually have one right now. But exploring your financing options, and it's a, the, 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 the key thing there is to talk to a professional or two yeah. before you really start looking. And yeah. if you have any, if, if you don't have those relationships, reach out to us. We, you know, we, have we'll, we, we could refer you to some good, sound lenders that will not sell you a bit of good, bill of goods. So, you know, they'll talk they'll to you and you. educate you properly. Yep, which is really important. And then, then the third thing is, and I'm going to give you a, a website, look for grants or gift funds. Um, try downpaymentresource.com. I had never heard of this before until today, which I think is yeah. amazing. Yeah, so just check into that. There, I mean, there are some, and there are different qualification points, yeah. but usually especially for the younger professionals yeah. people just you know starting in a home uh, home buying business is having that down payment because you have to have some, in most cases you have to have a little bit of money yeah and, and having that bridge once you get in you generally do all right yep it's just but getting in it, it's tough it's tough mm -hmm. getting in but your your lenders especially like like I live closer to a rural area, so you know they have th those lenders who are down here, you know, are more appropriate. They understand that. Yeah. If I'm a, a um, uh, if I'm a Fairfax lender, where there's no um, <laughs> rural you know, area, yeah. no rural, you know, it's it just that's not what they do. So, yeah. um, you, you know, talk with us about that. But always remember, in terms of the optimism. And I'm always optimist. I'm an optimist about real estate. The housing market is the first to slow mm -hmm. and the first to rebound. Yeah. So if you think of the pandemic, how the housing, the real estate market got crushed, mm -hmm. bam, it came back it came right with back. a line. Yeah. And even if you too. think about 2007 and eight, when it was horrible, Mm -hmm. That all came back. Yeah, it took it a while. Mm -hmm. That took you know about five years before it started to come back, but it came back. I bought my, I bought a home in, I settled in April, and it crashed in August. Sheesh. And then I sold it two years ago. At a plus. See, there you at, go. At, at a plus. You wait long but, enough, uh, people. You know, if you're not. And that, that's where I get back to buying, like you buy in yep. your home. You know, if you're selling it tomorrow, um, maybe not a good time. Nope, I probably have to write a check. But if you're if you're holding on to it a little bit, yeah. And the alternative for those folks is to rent. Mm -hmm. And um, the yeah. average rent nationwide is over two thousand dollars. I believe it. The average mortgage rate, right? But more not mortgage rate. Mortgage right now mm -hmm. is a little less than two thousand, but it's up a lot. It is up a lot it's over the past lot. year. Yeah, it went up what fifty something. It went, it went from like uh, twelve hundred and fifty to you know nineteen hundred. Yeah, um, 
but uh, you know, renting is even far worse. And you know, you're, you're still paying a mortgage when you're renting. You're just you're paying someone else's mortgage. Right. So, right. So, uh, anyway. Yep. Do you have anything else? I think that's yeah, it. Yeah, I think we've covered covered yeah. quite a bit. There's a you lot know, of maybe information. Good, good questions, and uh, um, I know we have an event coming up uh, in Halloween weekend. We have yeah. a the, the, the winery at Wilderness event. Winery. Yeah. So, you know, if any of y'all are interested in that, we usually get a, you know 100, 150. Well, probably that, 140 that's a fun event. event. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, the Wilderness Winery is a you know, fun place for all age groups. There's yep. a lot to do there. Yep. All my kids you know, can chase roosters or yep. you know, listen to music or yep. you know, sip some wine. They my kids played uh, or painted the pumpkins and just yeah. ran around and played last year. And we need your kids to come back and help us out. With they that. they will for sure. They're they're good little workers. Well thank you very much. Lakata Live from Jen and John is out.